So uh, there are patterns of attention in depression. That is, people can be over-focused, right, on the problem and stay in their associations to the problem. So again, it's like the, uh, their identity becomes defined by being depressed. And then everything kind of cascades from that. And because they're hyper-focused on the problem, what again tends to take place is the problem becomes overwhelming. Rather than being able to break it down into smaller chunks and making progress in this area or that area, where they begin to then re-motivate themselves to take action, they're overwhelmed and they try to solve everything at once. Uh, when we were in high school, we were always told to do a math problem step by step by step. And even if you could come up with the solution, well, what happens, again, in depression, is rather than taking step by step by step, they try to get it all at once and clear up everything. And the more they do that, the more desperate they get, because the more desperate they get, then the less action they're taking, the less action they're taking, the more they feel stuck, and everything becomes uh, wound around and uh, more uh, problematic for them. So the frame people put around an issue really determines where the limitations lie. I love this story about Milton Erickson. Bill and I have had a um, lovely experience getting to know uh, many of the fam family members in, in Dr. Erickson's family. As a matter of fact, Bill um, conducted, did you say conducted? No. Uh, you, you conducted I conducted the wedding. The wedding of one of Dr. Erickson's granddaughters. That was, I didn't uh, marry the granddaughter. You didn't marry her, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm already married. Right. She used to wait too young. <laughs> And so, um, so we got to really get to know the family and understand more about their experience in living with a person that was uh, so positively oriented. People would come from all around to study with Dr. Erickson, and he would often ask them this mental um, to have this mental experience, he would say, how many ways can you go from Phoenix, he lived in Phoenix, to Tucson and back again? Well, they would come up with the regular ways. You know, you could take the train, you could take the bus, you could drive, you could maybe walk, that'd be a long way. You could fly. You could fly, and then they'd run out of ideas. And he would say, you know, if you relax your mind, he was asking them to go into Alpha. If you relax your mind, you'll be surprised at how many other ideas will come to your consciousness. And so they'd relax, and then they'd get sort of creative. Well, you could take a hot air balloon. You could take a plane going backwards around the Earth. You could um, tunnel under the Earth. You could perhaps even astral travel. Somebody said that. He was a little aghast at that idea. Um, and so they would come up with um, a whole set of other ideas, and then they would run out of ideas, and he would say, that's very good. But you know what? I think if you relax your mind again, you might be absolutely surprised what else you come up with. What was he doing? He was priming people to have positive associations and teaching them something very important. This is a great exercise to do with clients. And what he was teaching was there are many solutions to a problem. You are only limited by how you're thinking about it, by how you're focusing attention, as we said yesterday.